on your mark, get set, go. Welcome STEM engineers. Today we are going to be building snap cube spinners and we're going to be building two of them. I'd like you to come up with a hypothesis as to whether you think a large snap cube spinner will spin longer or shorter time than a small snap cube spinner. So we're going to be building two today, a large one and a small one, and then we're going to be testing them. But your first question may be, what on earth is a snap cube spinner? Well, these are snap cubes. They're these little blocks that snap together because they have six sides and one of the sides has a piece that points out. Five of the sides have a hole where you can connect a piece to that one. And a spinner is made by taking first one piece that's going to be your centerpiece. And we're gonna set that face up on the table. Then we're going to create four legs to come off from each of the four sides of that cube. And we wanna make these legs even in length. All of mine are two cubes long because we want it to be uniform in size. That way it is balanced when we spin it. If I don't have even legs, if one is longer than the others, it's gonna create more weight on that side of the spinner and it's going to push that side down as I'm spinning it. So that side's gonna drag and then we're not gonna get accurate results. So this is what I do. I take my center cube and I put it face up for right now. And then I'm gonna take my legs that I've made and I'm gonna push them in to the sides. And now I have a spinner. I can spin it over so that that piece is on the bottom and it twirls. So now I have made a spinner. I wouldn't want to put it down this way because this side has so much more surface area touching the table that it creates a lot of friction and I try and spin it and it doesn't spin nearly as well as it does when I put just this piece down. Now my hand is probably bigger than yours so I also like to build a handle and put that on the top so that it can really spin well. That's my small, small spinner. So I'm gonna set this one aside and now I'm gonna build my large spinner. I'm gonna start with the same process. I'm gonna get one cube. This is gonna be my centerpiece and I'm gonna put it straight up. Now ahead of time, I built four even legs. They're each seven cubes long. Yours can be a different number of cubes long, but you just wanna make sure they're all exactly the same so that one side doesn't drag because it's unbalanced. And now I'm going to press these sides in, and now I need to flip it over so that the pointy side is down and put my handle on. Now I could be done with my big spinner now, but sometimes I like to get a little fancy and I like to design these tails. And each tail is four cubes and they're all shaped the same way. And I'm going to place them on the ends, just kind of for decoration. And now my large spinner is done and it's time for me to test this out. But in order to test it, I either have to spin both of them at the same time and then watch to see which one spins, stops spinning last. Or I might have a friend spin one while I spin the other. Or if I have a timer, I could spin one and time it on my timer. And then when I'm done, spin the other one and time it and compare the two times as well. Before I do this, I want to come up with a hypothesis. Now a hypothesis is an educated guess as to what I think is going to happen. So I'm trying to determine which one will spin longer, if a large one or a small spinner spins the longest. So in my head, I'm gonna think ahead of time and I'm gonna say, what do I think is going to happen? Do I think the small one's going to spin longer or do I think the large one is going to spin longer? Now there isn't a right or wrong answer when you're coming up with a hypothesis. You're just coming up with a guess as to what you think might happen. Then I'm gonna test it and see if my guess matched what my results were. Now, in my classroom, when you get done, what we do is I give each student a magnet and they go up to my board and we have a chart on it that says big on one side and small on the other. And you put your magnet on the side that tells you which spinner spun the longest. And then at the end of class, we kind of look at that and see if there was a, a majority that went one way or the other, and if not, why we think that might not have happened. So one of the things we find is if you really spin your spinner vigorously, like really fast, sometimes the legs go flying off. So we don't count those results because we really wanna see how long it actually spins. And once the leg falls off from it, it kind of stops spinning really quickly. So um, go ahead, 
build two spinners, test them out, and you can let me know in the comments which one spun the longest for you.